Yay. Yay. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Brian and Leslie Fothery here from the Unbreakable Podcast, coming to you um, once again, and also on YouTube. And any place you can get your podcast, you can get this on video if you want on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com backslash at the unbreakable family. The at is the ampersand at. So, so that's youtube.com backslash at the unbreakable family. Happy uh, May. Happy May. Happy upcoming Mother's Day, which we're going to talk about in just a second. Yep. Um, I am going to shamelessly plug, I got it back behind me, I got to reach <laughs> for it. My wife brought me a prop last week, and we kept it around for this week's video and podcast. Look at that. She wrote a book. Her picture's on the back. <laughs> Look, it matches. Kind of yeah, cute. Thank you. Um, without the glasses on the book, yeah. but still great. We had a sale going on through Monday the 8th, which was buy one and get one free for Mother's Day. And so I have extended it through today, which is... You know, the final Thursday before Mother's, Mother's Day, Day mm -hmm. which is, what day is the, that today? Mother's Day is the 14th. So, so we're at the 11th. Mm -hmm. So today, <laughs> if you go out today <laughs> and go on to theunbreakablefamily.com yes. and you order a book, we'll send you two. It may not get to you in time for Mother's Day, but you can Still give it to it. them mm -hmm. posthumously, not posthumously, but post-Mother's Day yes. Um, yes. to them. We don't want them dying on you. Um, we, get, we get gifts like that every once in a while. You know, we ordered it. It didn't get here yet. So, yeah, yeah. We got a, a, it was a, it was a birthday gift from my wife that, that came like a month after her yeah. birthday. Uh, one of the kids ordered her something and it took forever to get here. It was still good. Got to love the supply chain. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we want to celebrate Mother's Day uh, yes. with you today because it's coming up here in just a few days. And we want to... I talk about the importance of moms mm -hmm. and the importance of uh, mothers in your life. First thing we want to do is honor our own, own mothers. Right. I'm going to let my wife go first while I think about something to honor my mom with <laughs> so I don't get in trouble. I'm joking. There's things to honor my mom. But, uh, um, yeah, so I, I was raised by a really good mom. I had a really, really good mom. She was loving and kind and very with us. She was, she was present with us. She um, stayed home until uh, we were school age. She um, was present in all of the plays and musicals and choir concerts and all the things that we did um, throughout the school year. She was um, also a really, really good example to me of a pastor's wife. I didn't realize I was going to become a pastor's wife, uh, but um, she modeled to me how to be a really wonderful Christian woman. She had good morals and standards, yeah. and she lived according to what God um, put in her heart and showed her and revealed to her. She was just a really good example of how to be a great pastor's wife. And so I learned a lot of things from my mom. I learned how to, um, you know, run my home from my mom. I I have gone on and studied and learned other things past where I learned originally, but she gave me foundation that was yeah. so good. And I'm blessed to have a really, really good mom. I am thankful for her. Um, she is definitely uh, one of those moms who will just do whatever she can. If you need help, she's going to do whatever she can to make sure that she's helped you. And she's just loving and kind and a doer like that. She, she That's the kind of mom she is. She's a doer. And I'm kind of a lot like her. So... Mm -hmm lucky him and blessed him he gets to have and looks like it too it <laughs> and i look like my mom too but really a lot yeah so i'm i'm blessed to have a really good mom a very loving godly woman and she is um definitely someone that i aspire to continue to be like even as i get older and older so what about you that it that's what i'm gonna say and what about you <laughs> well, well first let me say Leslie can say this. Her mother can watch this, and she can suck up. I can't. I don't have that option. <laughs> my mom passed away several years ago. Yeah. Um, um, but my mom was uh, not the same type of mom that Leslie's was. She wasn't the uh, ever present mom because she worked outside the, the home quite a bit. Um, she wasn't always at all the ball games and stuff. Mainly because she had six children. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot more of you than yeah, more of us. Uh, they did the math one year. There's four boys and two girls, and one summer, 
uh, just the four boys were all playing sports, you know, mostly baseball. And I think it was something like 400 games. Wow. For the four of us. Wow. It was it was like three to 400 games. Impossible to be yeah. in all those games. <laughs> yeah. So they weren't there for everything. Uh, my mom or my dad. Uh, but they came to the things that they felt that were important. And they celebrated the things that they thought were mm -hmm. important in our lives. Um, but what my mom was really good at, she was that, that mom that you know in the old school neighborhoods where all the kids came. Mm -hmm. All the kids came. And Mom could cook, and she would whip up a bunch of food and feed a small tribe of people. Yeah. It didn't matter if it was just friends of one kid or friends of four or five kids. Mm -hmm. There might be 8, 10, 15 people around a table, and she's feeding everybody. Yep. And and then she became the person that kids that had problems at home would come and talk to. Mm -hmm. and, and so yep. my mom was a good um uh, shoulder to lean on ear. and a good yeah. listening ear. Yeah. She was she was that person. Mm -hmm. um, and and one thing she did really well, she modeled faithfulness um, in her faith mm -hmm. and in her relationship with my dad. Yeah. Um, uh, my dad wasn't uh, the most consistent church going person, so I didn't have a pastor <laughs> model <laughs> in front of me. No. Um, I had um, different modeling, um, and but my mom. Uh, I always joked that when I was a kid, I had a drug problem because my mom drug me to church on Sunday, Sunday night, Wednesday night, Saturday for the benefits. Whenever the doors were open, she drug me to church. And I was shaking her head. For those of you on the podcast, my <laughs> wife was shaking her head at me. Um, but um, my mom made sure that I was in church. Yeah. She mm -hmm. made sure that I was learning a foundation of faith. Yeah. And um, that has stuck with me, you know, uh, even through now. In my life. To to um, his mother's credit, she knew that Brian was different than her other children. She knew that from carrying him in the womb. She knew that when he was born, um, she was trying to take him to church to have him dedicated and um, got tripped up and fell on the ground with him. And the Lord protected him and kept him safe. And she always said that she knew Brian was different and she made it her her mission to make sure he got grounded in yeah. the things of the Lord. And sure enough, he is different. His other siblings are not like him. Um, they're they're fine people, but they're just not like what Brian is. And they call Brian, actually, the um, white sheep of the family, which is their joke. But um, <laughs> but he's just different. He, he's not the same. And it's because his mom yeah. put different things into him, did different things with him than yeah. what she did the others. And, and it made a difference in his life. Yeah. The white sheep story really came from my dad. So we'll do that on Father's Day. Yeah, we will. We'll, we'll come back to <laughs> we'll that and explain that. We'll come back to that story and um, explain it. It's a funny story. He, he mentioned celebrating. Um, my mom comes from a, her mom, um, to honor my grandma too at this point, but my family was a family that celebrates. Yeah. They enjoyed everyone's birthday and they celebrated everyone's birthday. We always had food, we had cake. We had family get together. Everything was celebrated. My grandmother came from, unfortunately, a home where her father had abandoned them. And so I think her way of making sure everyone was loved and taken care of was she made sure everyone had a birthday celebration. Um, we had, and then any other holiday, we all got together. We always yeah. had food. We always had good times. We laughed. We played games, you know, whatever. But it was a celebrating kind of a life that, yep. that I grew up in. And I we've tried to create that for our kids. Yeah. Not in exactly the same way, but we still do celebrating of who they are and what they've accomplished and the holidays mm -hmm. and the and their birthdays, you know, they're very important to us. Yeah. And we've we've tried to um, make those special. I've tried to make those special yeah. as a mom to them. Um, that they would know that they are loved. I think that's what moms do kind of the best is just make sure that you know your love yeah and and speaking of her grandma we stole some of her recipes because <laughs> you know the christmas breakfast was always great at their mm -hmm. house they mm -hmm. would feed everybody in the sun that was kind of fun so i i'm married into that yeah. which is really great <laughs> uh on my side of the family we really didn't do that right um i had just a different. grandma who um she always made uh, a big three or four layer chocolate cake for your birthday. And that mm -hmm. was a huge highlight. We all loved it. Um, and Leslie always jokes, she's like, 
It wasn't even from scratch. It was like a box cake. We didn't care. No, it was they don't something care. special from Grandma. It's just Grandma made it, and Grandma that's made good. Grandma chocolate cake with the white icing in between, mm -hmm. and covered with chocolate icing, and it was the best, you know, nostalgically the best cake ever made. Right. Um, and so we loved it because it was showing a value to us and how much we cared. So, right. Um, my my, both of my grandmothers, on my mom and my dad's side, especially my dad's side, she was really given to hospitality. Mm -hmm. My mom, uh, mm -hmm. my. My grandma on my mom's side, not as much, but she um, did a lot of things for us. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we have a legacy of that, and we want right. to maintain that. It would be interesting for you to, in the comments um, on the YouTube channel, uh, let us know about how your moms and your grandmas right. influenced your life. If you, yeah. if you would do that, it would be pretty cool to do that. So we're going we're gonna to move forward from... Just honoring our moms and grandmas. So we kind of, yeah, we kind of want to talk about God's plan for yeah. momhood today. Um, God made moms. He, he huh. knew that we Ooh. were going to need moms, <laughs> um, and moms are really special. They are uniquely created yeah. by God to, first of all, even birth a baby to to carry and birth a baby. That's like incredible. God is just amazing. In his miraculous ways of how he has created us. Let me jump in. Guys, be thankful it's not you <laughs> or me. Because we would, we would kill ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> but um, moms also are special because they're the nurturing part of that. Yeah. Um, dads sometimes, you know, they don't care so much. They're <laughs> yeah, it's not that they're, we don't care. We just don't just, coddle and they nurture. Don't, they don't nurture as much. They are um, on the other side of things, and we'll talk about them later. <laughs> but the moms got the nurturing. And I actually know a few friends of mine who, even though they're the mom, they aren't the nurturing. Part. Right. You know, so sometimes it, it shifts around. But I think God had a plan for moms to love their kids, to raise their kids, and nurture them up in the admonition of the Lord. He expects moms to to teach their children how to love and serve yeah. and honor God and how to love and serve and honor the people around us because yeah. God says the two most important um, commandments are to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and to love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what moms do a lot. Um, we are wired to be the loving kind and generous people that God needs us to be. And that's what we are supposed to teach to our children. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he doesn't have anything to say yet, so yeah. that's okay. We're going to go on. Um, <laughs> but um, moms are special. Moms are special because they are incredibly patient most of the time. Um, and, <laughs> and they are willing to put up with a whole lot of stuff. And even when their children come back and disrespect them, often moms will put up with that. That's not necessarily God's plan. He wants your children to respect you. Um, he wants your children to love you. Um, moms have uh, hearts that are huge. They have hearts that will give anything for their children. They will sacrifice anything. Moms give up all that sleep when their babies are little and when their kids are toddlers yeah. and they're in the bed. And we had a toddler who was the, the queen of drop kicking in bed. And you had Leg to, up, drop down, <laughs> boom, like a wrestler. Oh, yeah, it was, it was bad. Dang. But we loved her through it all and we let her, still let her get in the bed. I don't know. It was the ultimate test of love, I think. But um, <laughs> moms love their kids. They are willing to put up with a whole lot of stuff. Um, my mom, actually, I'm going back to this for a minute, but um, sure. my brother has had a hard times through the years. He's had places where he's walked away from God, places where he hasn't um, had, uh, he hadn't done things the way he should do things. And then he's had things happen to him that were very hard. Yeah. And so my mom, though, has been a rock. My mom connects with him every day. She sends him scriptures. She prays for him. She's she yep. is enduring the process with him, leading him back to the Lord constantly and helping him to establish that relationship with Jesus. And it's, it's something that she has a special grace for. Moms have a grace to do things that sometimes dads don't. Right. Dads sometimes are like, it's cut and dry. This is how it is. Do it, take it or leave it. You know, they just can, can just, this is it. But moms, a lot of times, will nurture through. They will push through. They will stand with you. They will stay the course with you. Um, 
it's important that that moms are in our lives. They do important things. It's sad when we lose our moms. It hard, is hard, hard to lose our moms. Yeah, I remember when my mom uh, at the end of her life, uh, we lost her to cancer. She had cancer and we didn't know it. And she's in the hospital. She's dying. And I remember calling. I was pastoring a church at the time, and I remember calling one of the uh, the people on, on my board. That, that was my one of my leaders, and. Um, He's a bishop in, in, with our church. And I called him up, and he's like, what do you need? I said, I have no idea what I need because my mom's never died before. Yeah. And so that was a, a challenging moment and a challenging day. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's not easy losing a mom. So if, you, if you've you lost your mom, you know, we fully empathize and sympathize, mm -hmm. but remember the good stuff. You know, I uh, recently had uh, someone die that we knew really well, and one of the um, grandchildren posted the thing says don't die with the dead don't don't just die with them mm -hmm. you have to keep living your life yeah. honor them respect them but don't die with them mm -hmm. i thought it was such insight yeah. for uh, this young man to post this mm -hmm. and and say that um because i've got family and friends both that tend to they've had that kind of tragic thing happen where they've lost them um, a parent or a mm -hmm. grandparent or a brother or a sister or even in some cases a husband or a wife mm -hmm. and they quit living they they just get into grief mode and stay in grief mode mm -hmm. forever mm -hmm. um, and that's not healthy it's mm -hmm. good to grieve but it's not good to grieve forever and forever and forever so um so i would tell you that we honor that we honor your moms your grand your grandmoms mm -hmm. grandmothers Meemaws, mammals, whatever, those. all the names that they are. So anything else about honoring well, moms and grandmas? <laughs> about honoring them, yes. Always honor them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> always do it. It's a good thing. It's always good thing. honor them. Um, That's on, it. We're done. On Mother's Day. Glad you came today. <laughs> Have a great day. No, actually, I was thinking of something else that um, my daughter and I were talking about the other day. Um, we were talking about how... When I was a young mom, I had, um, I, I'm a very in charge person. I'm in charge and I'm detailed and I want things to go my way. And huh. I was not mature when I was first married. I mean, I thought I was, but I had a lot of room to grow. And I was growing, but I didn't realize until I saw a couple of our children reacting to how I was behaving that I need to change a few things. <laughs> um, I I could yell and slam and stomp and you know do all the loud things to show my aggravation, um, but it just really scared my children, and I could see that in their face, and I wanted to change, and so I got a hold of a book that um, was called We Were Homeschooling, so that was part of it, but it it was called Homeschooling with a Meek and Quiet Spirit. And it basically, it talked about getting hold of your anger, getting hold of your emotions, and displaying peace and quiet and meekness, um, which is strength under control, um, displaying that in a different way so, so that it's a blessing to your family. And anyway, this book really turned my attitudes around and helped me to understand that when my children are doing something or when they're running to me with a crisis or whatever, I'm not supposed to... Um, not supposed to react um, violently or <laughs> maybe not violently, but you know, passionately. I just I'm just supposed to to hear what the problem is or or assess what's going on and respond appropriately in a godly way. And that was one of the best lessons that I ever learned as a mom. Um, That's good. My girls don't even really remember. Maybe maybe my oldest does. Um, remember me behaving that way when we had our final daughter our last child she kind of brought that back out in me and I had to really rework on that I thought I was done with that but I had to go back and visit that and rework it and I was okay okay not gonna risk not gonna react to this child I'm gonna respond and I had to keep my cool and I had to be um I on the other hand react to that child just <laughs> yeah. so you know I mean it was a it was a thing I had to really work on and but it's, that's what moms do. Moms learn yeah. how to be the best mom that they can be. And they work on those traits and those um, reactions so that, and responses so that they can do the best for their children. I, I really had 
to learn how to do um, a better response. And I have, and I'm, I've grown as a mom. And I'm, I'm, when now things are up with my grandchildren, I can just like look at them and go, okay, and what do we need to do? You know, I just kind of ask questions and kind of find out where they're coming from. And I can deal with it way better than just like jumping, running yeah. and trying to get in the middle of it and, and just react. That didn't help always. So I, I've learned that. It was a really valuable lesson. And, and so that was a good memory to just think about how far I've come. And I'm sure that all of you moms have places where you've had to grow and you've had to change. And you can be proud that you have done that and, and su been successful at that. And if you haven't been successful at it, don't stop. Don't stop growing. Don't stop learning. I think one of the best parts of momhood is learning, just continuing to learn. And even though I'm a grandma now, I'm still learning. I'm learning how to be the best grandma I can be. I'm learning how to... Um, interact with grandchildren which is a different dynamic than children mm -hmm. when you when they're your children you're fully responsible for everything they're learning and everything they're doing and everything they're saying you know and 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 it's a big thing and when they're grandchildren I still am trying to aid my daughter with the raising of those children I don't want to be um contrary. Helicopter mom. yeah I don't want to be contrary to what she's doing and I don't want to be like like just trying to police her kids for her, if that's her job, but I want to be helpful. So I am still a grandma that has um, boundaries. I'm a grandma that has, we have rules at grandma and grandpa's house, you know, that this is how we do it here. It's not always the same as how they do it at their right. house, but there's still some boundaries and rules and I'm, I'm learning how to be a good grandma um, that is helpful and in raising those grandchildren. Anything to say to that? No. No. Okay. I have something to say, but not to okay, that. Okay, go ahead. I think that's all I had to say about that topic right there. So, so you're good? good? I'm good. You can all go right. ahead. I get to finish this out. <laughs> so I'm going to talk to you, um, not really specifically about momhood, but kind of. Um, most everyone who's on here, if you're a Christian, knows Proverbs chapter 31. Yeah. It's, it's talking about the, the excellence of this particular woman. Mm -hmm. And, and finding this godly woman. And it's, some say it's just a, uh, not a real person, because <laughs> she's too good to be true. Um, it's a model. But it's a model. Mm -hmm. Some say it's a specific person that right. Solomon was referring to mm -hmm. when when uh, he was writing Proverbs. Um, I don't care which way you land on the debate, doesn't matter to me. But I was just, just reading in there just recently um, about this woman. And how she handles herself, mm -hmm. and and uh, those things. And so every mom out there wants what it talks about at the end of the chapter. It says her children will rise up yep. and call, call her, her blessed. blessed. So what we see and hear, and what we've been taught, is that her children are going to go on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, LinkedIn, <laughs> you know, whatever social media that they're on, yeah. Instagram, and they're going to get on and tell everybody how great their mom is. Yeah. That's not at all what that scripture's saying. Not at all. Um, what it's the phrase rise the children will rise up that mm -hmm. that phrase rise up mm -hmm. means to be established to be built mm -hmm. to uh, to to be uh, nurtured mm -hmm. so the fact that you actually took the time to purposefully and with intentionality raise your children mm -hmm. when they rise up become mm -hmm. adults. Mm -hmm. The very life they live is what calls you blessed. Yeah, yeah. It's it's not compliments from your children, though. Those are good. There's nothing no there's nothing wrong yeah. with that. Mm -mm. You know, our, our, my my kids brag on their mom a lot more than they brag on me, and they need <laughs> to fix that. But anyway, <laughs> I'm just playing. Um, but they do. They brag on their mom all the time. They talk really good about their mom. I don't know what I did, but it, I'm going to say right there. I'm going to interject. Moms spend time with their kids. And me being a stay-at-home mom and a homeschool oh, mom, yeah. I spent all my time with my children. Yeah. And Brian, because he was outside of the home some, and he was yeah. in and out doing work and taking care of all of us, yeah. he wasn't necessarily with them all the time. They have a little bit closer tie to me in that sense because I was with them all yeah. the time than they do with Brian. They still love their dad. They still interact with their dad. They yeah. they know what dad likes and what he doesn't. I mean, you know, they're good. 
But the mom factor is mm -hmm. mom is with those children, raising and nurturing them in a way that dad isn't always there. I thought you had nothing else to say. I guess I did. Sorry. Oh, sorry. There you go. <laughs> anyway, now I get to finish. Maybe. We'll mm -hmm. see. <laughs> For those of you on the podcast, she just gave me this look like, I'm going to do what I want. <laughs> <laughs> this woman in Proverbs 31 yes. is what you want to rise up to. And yes. when, let me say that when you're raising your children, it's, it's a great temptation and a trap to want to be best buddies with your kids. Mm -hmm. Both moms and dads, mm -hmm. but yep. really more so with moms mm -hmm. than with dads. But both, um, especially if you're in a, in a relationship where you're remarried or you've been divorced, right. it's really a trap to be best buddies with your mm -hmm. kids instead of being the parent. Right. But the, the way they'll raise up and call you blessed, the way people around them says that her, says that her husband We'll talk about her good in the gates mm -hmm. of the city. Yeah. He'll talk good about her and he'll talk mm -hmm. well about her yeah. because he knows how he she took care of his family. Right. He knows how she raised the children that he gave her to mm -hmm. raise. He knows all these things. He knows all of that. And so he'll he'll bless her himself. Right. He'll call her, you know, all these great things. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't talk bad about my wife. I talk good about my wife. Yeah. Even the people around me are talking bad about theirs. Mm -hmm. I just don't join in the conversation. Right. I, I, I stay out of that conversation and mm -hmm. I talk well about my wife. Yeah. But raise your children. And I want to tell you, it's worth the process. It's worth raising them in the admonition of the Lord, what they even mean. Right. That means that you give them a foundation of faith, yeah. that you teach them who God is, what God wants in their life. Mm -hmm. You help direct them to the things that God has yeah. for their plan, uh, uh, their purpose, and their destiny. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and it's, it's i give you an example. And Leslie has done a great job of raising our children. But I remember every single one of my children at one point, they were starting to hit late teens and going into adulthood. And, uh, and some of them even earlier, we had this conversation. And I'm like, what do you be? What do you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> you know, when they're yep. little, it's like, I want to be a cowboy, a princess, and a ballerina. Yep. You know, whatever, you know, yep. whatever. You know, for my son, Scott, I want to be Walker, Texas Ranger. Yeah. Um, he still wants to be Walker. He does. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I'm just playing. I love you, Scott. Uh, <laughs> um, I had this conversation with them. What do you want to be? And they would all give me what they thought they yeah. wanted to go into, what they right. wanted to study, what they wanted to become. Mm -hmm. And I asked every one of my children the same question because we live in a kingdom. Mm -hmm. We don't live in a republic. We don't live in a democracy. Right. We do physically in the United States, but... We live in a kingdom spiritually. Mm -hmm. And so I don't really get to choose my purpose. I don't really get to choose my plan. I don't really get to choose my destiny. God does. He's right. the king. Right. So I got to find out what his plan, his purpose is mm -hmm. to get my destiny. Right. And so I asked him, well, did you ask God what he wanted you to be? Mm -hmm. And they all looked at me like, you don't play fair. <laughs> you, you need to stop that. But we, we encouraged our children yeah. to not just come up with, what the, what do you want to be? Right. But what does God want you mm -hmm. to be? Because mm -hmm. that matters more than personal choice. Right. Um, and and all of them have taken that in stride, but and Leslie really nurtured that in them, so that now people look at our children, they look at our family, and they say really nice things about us because of our children, mm -hmm. um, because of how they act and how mm -hmm. they behave and what they do. Yeah. And so they, they say good things about her and about me, more her than me, but both. Um, us. Um, and, and then they come to us and want help on how, how can I do that? Mm -hmm. And so we, and that's what we're here for. We're here to help you. We're here to encourage yeah. you. We're here to bless you. And um, so we just want to tell you moms, happy mother's day. Yeah. We, Keep if you're a single mom, if you're a divorced mom, if you're a mom who's trying to get out of a bad situation, if you have the perfect household, whatever it is that your situation is, mm -hmm. we wish you a happy Mother's Day this yep. week. We pray that God will bless you and strengthen you. We pray that God will give you insight, strategies, and tips on how to raise your children. That's how Leslie raised ours. She would just spend mm -hmm. hours in study and hours in prayer. Like, mm -hmm. okay, God, how do I handle this child? <laughs> And what do I do with this child? How do I help them become what they're supposed to become? Mm -hmm. And 
and the Holy Spirit would come and lead and guide her. If she had a problem with it, she would come to me and we would pray together. Mm -hmm. And we would find mm -hmm. ways um, and hear God's voice on how to raise that child. Um, so motherhood is a scary job. It's a difficult job, but it's one well worth doing well. So I'm gonna, I got something to finish. Go ahead. Finish. You finish up. <laughs> got something to finish. Um, so he was sharing about that verse at the end of Proverbs 31 where it talks about that they'll rise up and their lives will be the yep. blessing. Of, and so we always say, um, we didn't know it was scripture, but proof is in the pudding <laughs> is mm -hmm. what my husband says all the yeah. time. Look at our kids. Look at our kids. Our proof is in the pudding. And, and our kids are... Um, examples of what we raise them to be yeah they are they're wonderful examples of what there is in me as a mom i'm gonna say my heart's the happiest when i look at my kids and i see that they have chosen jesus when i look at my kids and i and i see they have chosen the way yeah. that god wants them to choose yeah. when i watch them and they are prayer warriors and they are looking for the right kind of spouse and they are working jobs with excellence and they have great worth ec work ethics and all that those things not only call you know reflect on us as parents yeah. on me as a mom to to make me be blessed but they make me blessed because i'm looking at them and i see my my children and i see what they yeah. have become and it's a blessing so raise those children to the best of your ability and let it come back to you in waves and waves of blessing is so worth it. We'll leave it there. That's so good. Now, don't forget, today is the last day for you to go in to UnbreakableFamily.com and order the family manual and get the two for the price of one with free shipping. Yes. Today's the last day. Do, do it. it. Do it. Do it today. You can do it. All right? We love you. Pray for you. Look forward to talking to you the next time. Have a great afternoon and evening or morning or whenever you're listening or watching this. All right? God bless you guys. Talk to you soon.